as we look at expenses, we look at income, we're going to look at expenses. And what I'd like you to do is to consider two things. Number one, uh, taking advantage of the information we're going to give you on the Federal CARES Act. That's number one. And number two, if you own land, I was with a pastor earlier this week that owns 60 acres of land. We have a number of pastors whose churches own land. I'm begging you not to panic and try to sell the land right now because the market is down. And you don't want to be so desperate that you sell valuable assets below market value. So let's go into expenses. We talked about income and I'll answer questions about income later on. This is a high level overview. Let's talk about expenses. One, I believe that clergy compensation is essential and, and it's a need and it's a priority. I told a pastor last night, he said, I'm going to uh, give up my salary. And I said, don't do that because we need strong churches. Strong churches need, need pastors. Pastors are underpaid generally in the first place. And what you don't want to do is to sacrifice your family's needs, especially when there's so many other options. Um, ongoing communications is going to be important. If you're going to make any changes in the church because you're cutting expenses, then you, you want to communicate that to the congregation in a way that is honest and transparent, but doesn't make you sound desperate. All of your obligations, all of your loans, whoever you owe money to and whoever you pay regularly, that is negotiable. Everything is negotiable. I'm suggesting that you work as a leadership team. I was on the phone last night with my finance committee at the church, this morning with the treasurer and chairman of the trustee board. I have a finance staff. Don't try this alone. The financial burdens of the church and decisions of the church should not be on the pastor alone. That's why I'm so glad to see so many others on this call. That you've got to help your pastor, you've got to support your pastor, and sometimes you actually have to go outside of the church and your staff to get legal or accounting help. But whatever help you need, get the help. Because I've been in situations for many years where I was the only one losing sleep over the church's finances, and there's no need to do that. Next slide. So these are the strategies that I want you to take seriously and get help in executing. Number one, explain your financial realities to your staff and leaders. Again, I have a sample letter in the back where I actually speak to my leadership about our finances. Based on your income projections, determine what kind of reductions you need. Can you save money on paper? <clears throat> if the building is closed, you probably aren't buying and serving a lot of food. Can you save money on food? Can you save money on paper? But the key is to separate your bills from your debt. Your bills are ongoing expenses that you have, and your debt is what you want to reduce to get cash flow relief. You can cut bills, but you have to negotiate debt. And once you separate your debt from your bills, then you can establish your priorities and figure out where you can cut expenses. Some of us don't really need to cut expenses, but this is a good time to review our expenses and make sure that our expenses align with our ministry priorities. Sometimes in church, we just, we're so used to spending money on certain things that we keep spending it even when that thing is no longer relevant. We've had a struggle in our church over printing bulletins. We print thousands of copies of bulletins for maybe the 13 people that really want a paper bulletin. And now that we're not in the building, we don't print bulletins. And I promise you, when we go back, we will never print bulletins again, never. So these are opportunities to make cuts, either existing cuts, like right now cuts, or cuts that we can put in place when the stay at home orders have been lifted. And that's what I mean by determine the timing of spending cuts. Next slide. When we make our expense decisions, we have to communicate with vendors and creditors. For those of you who have mortgages, and John will talk more about this, I want you to call your bank. Don't wait for them to call you. Call your bank. They know what's going on. The good thing about this crisis is that it's global. I've got a letter 
a sample letter that you can send to your bank or to your finance company. If you finance the bus, anybody you owe money to, get in touch with them. Get in touch with your others, uh, with, with those persons that you pay regularly to make sure they know that you know that you owe them money and make sure you find out who you can talk to about doing some negotiating, the kind of negotiations that John will talk about later on. Then communicate with the church members to make sure they know if Mrs. Jones has to be let go, which I don't think she will be because of what Attorney McCoy will teach you, but if Ms. Jones has to be let go, let people know. Don't let Facebook or Instagram or Twitter be the means of communication. You communicate with your own people about any staff changes that are gonna be made. 